So the first point I'd like to make is uh, that photovoltaics and wind are now number one and number two new generation capacity installed around the world. And coal is number three. And I expect over the next few years that will become ever more stark. PV and wind will simply take off and leave coal in the dust. So in order to push up towards 100% renewable electricity, basically 90% PV wind and 10% existing hydro bio, we need technical diversity, that's wind and PV. We need demand management. We need wide geographical dispersion to sample a wide range of weather and demand uh, characteristics. And we need mass storage. And pumped hydro is 97% of all storage around the world. So high voltage DC transmission is the go-to technology for inter intracontinental uh, transmission. And in fact, uh, now people run HVDC systems from one side of China to the other, 3,000 kilometers, 1.1 megavolts, um, 12 gigawatts, which is about a third of the Australian installed capacity, and 10% loss. So you can transmit large amounts of power from North Queensland to South Australia or vice versa at a low net cost. And we could consider adding uh, an HVDC backbone from North Queensland down the Great Dividing Range across to Perth and also to double the capacity to Tasmania and this would allow us to ship power from one side of the continent to the other in essentially real time uh, at a cost which is really quite modest as I'll show you in a moment. You also need storage in order to manage 100% wind and PV. And uh, this is the famous site of Snowy 2.0 that the Prime Minister has been um, promoting. Existing 1.5 gigawatt power station that would be uh, increased to 3.5 gigawatts and linked with another dam called uh, Tantangra Reservoir um, up in the Kosciuszko National Park. What I'm talking about is that plus 99 other types of uh, sites called off-river pumped hydro where there's no river in sight. No river because 99% of Australia hasn't got rivers. So if you confine your pumped hydro searches to rivers, then you do away with 99% of all the potential sites that you might find. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, an oversized fire dam at the top of a hill, another one at the bottom of the hill. You connect them with a pipe or tunnel and the same water goes round and round a circle. No river required, no flood control required. So we have funding from uh, ARENA to find all of the pumped hydro sites in Australia to develop a public cost model so that you can find out what your local favourite site would cost roughly and also to integrate all of that together with a PV wind basis into a 100% renewable electricity grid to find out what it all would cost. So these are what's, what we're finding. You can go to our website, you can download a KML file, you can then zoom around in Google Earth and have a look at all these sites. Click on any site, up will come characteristics of that site. This is Araluan just near Canberra. There's enough sites there for stabilising, balancing all of New South Wales for a 100% renewable electricity system. Townsville, there's enough sites there for balancing the whole of Queensland. Even South Australia, which obviously has no ordinary hydro, has got enough sites for about 10 times more than is required to balance a 100% South Australian grid. The South Australian sites are in the mountains to the east of the Gulf. In Queensland, there's um, pumped hydro sites all the way down the Great Dividing Range. The yellow is the solar sites that are going in. Wind is green. The blue is the top 500 sites that we found in Queensland. And the black is the proposed Galilee Basin coal mines. As you can see, the wind, the PV, the people, the transmission, and the pumped hydro are all sitting right on top of each other. They're beautifully mixed together. And for any wind or PV farm developer, there'll be no trouble finding a good pumped hydro site close to where you want to build your wind or solar farm. So this is a snapshot of where we're up to at the moment by state, South Australia, Queensland, Canberra District, Tasmania, Alice Springs. So far we've found 5,800 sites. We're working on New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia and the rest of the Northern Territory. Um, we project that we'll end up with about 10,000 pumped hydro sites, which is about uh, 70 to 100 times more than is required to support a 100% renewable electricity grid. In other words, if any particular site has a problem, you just go over the hill, there'll be another site nearby. In short, there is absolutely no shortage of pumped hydro sites to support a 100% renewable electricity grid. And pumped hydro has a few notable advantages, being that it is about 10 times cheaper than batteries on a per kilowatt hour basis, 
and is completely off-the-shelf technology where you can get a reliable cost without any arm waving. And furthermore, there's 160,000 megawatts of it around the world. 97% of all storage is pumped hydro, so you don't have to um, invent anything to go at it in a large-scale way. So this is the, um, the top three sites we found in each of the districts we've searched so far. Graft also against the Snowy 2.0 scheme, which is 360 gigawatt hours. So you can see that these off-river sites are really jolly good, even in competition with an existing river-based pumped hydro system. And I think we'll find some rather good ones when we get around to analysing New South, New South Wales and Victoria, which have most of the mountains in Australia. Uh, the little bar on the right-hand side is the 0.13 gigawatt hour Tesla battery that's supposed to go into South Australia. It's not even visible. So the amount of water required is trivial. About 36 square kilometres of reservoir is sufficient to stabilise the entire Australian electricity system if it was 100% renewable. And that's a quarter the size of Lake Eucumbine and a tiny fraction of the artificial reservoirs around Australia. Most of the water is recycled. Evaporation suppressors can ensure that rainfall exceeds evaporation even in a place like Port Augusta. Looking now at 100% renewable electricity, in our studies, we assume no heroic assumptions. So we only use technologies that have got at least 100 gigawatt deployment, which means off the shelf, reliable, you can go and build them tomorrow. We look at hourly demand for uh, demand data, wind data, sun data for the years 2006 through 10. 90% wind PV, 10% existing hydro bio. Importantly, we distribute the, um, the systems over a million square kilometres from North Queensland through to South Australia and Tasmania. And that means that bad weather in one place is very unlikely to have bad weather also in another place. You can ship power from where the wind and sun are available to where it's not. And pumped hydro energy storage as, the, uh, as a storage medium. And <coughs> importantly, the cost of wind and PV just keep falling. So this is 2017 costs for the national electricity market, the pink uh, range there. And you can see that the last year arena large scale solar prices, PV was at the bottom end of that range and wind was actually below it. By the time we get to this year, wind and PV are both decisively below the um, 2017 NEM price. And of course you have to add in the cost of balancing, not just the cost of generation. And when you look at this hour by hour balancing cost, it turns out to be about $25 a megawatt hour, just $25. And this is comprised of the cost of the high voltage interconnectors that you'd need to move more power from state to state, plus the PV and wind spillage, plus the cost of um, uh, pumped storage. So a very um, modest cost on top of the actual cost of the PV and wind means that um, even at today's prices, both PV and wind are right in the middle of the current NEM wholesale price range. And by the 2020s, um, within just two or three years, with PV and wind falling to around $50 a megawatt hour in Australia, we'll be moving off the bottom of the current NEM wholesale price. In other words, it is game over, and PV and wind, uh, together with um, pumped storage and um, batteries and demand management and high voltage interconnectors, are going to uh, compete very successfully against anything. Just a note that um, we're currently building in Australia about three gigawatts of PV and wind on roof and ground. And at that rate, we'll be at more than 50% renewable electricity by 2030. And if we pushed it up to six gigawatts per year, in other words, doubled it, we would be hitting 100% renewable electricity in 2033. That's just 15 years away. Once we've got rid of all of the um, coal-fired power stations, then we need to think about what we do to further reduce emissions. And there are two very easy candidates, electrify land transport and electrify space and water heating by using um, renewable electric driven heat pumps. And together those three sectors are 55% of greenhouse gas emissions. So in conclusion, we're very rapidly moving to decarbonisation, wind, uh, PV, pumped hydro and high voltage DC can do the lot. They're all available, all being deployed at 100 gigawatt scale. We're on track for 50% renewable electricity by 2030 at zero net cost. And um, if we go to electrify virtually everything, we're on track for deep cuts of 75% um, at a time scale which is basically determined by politics. Thank you.